Tell us what you found um, by region, by spending category, and then overall. What kind of dip are we talking about? Well, we're looking at a dip of a few percentage points at this point um, over the last week or two, right? So we're, we're tracking a panel of about 30 million cardholders of Chase branded credit and debit cards across the country. And in the data through November 9th, those numbers had fallen by about four percentage points from where they were a week prior in the week ending November 2nd. Uh, it is true that those declines were bigger in some of the states where the virus is spreading most rapidly. Places like North Dakota, Wisconsin, Minnesota, spending was down more like seven percentage points. Uh, but basically in almost every state, we were seeing negative numbers there with some declines in spending. Um, you know, down maybe more like 2% in the states that are, that are seeing the least virus spread at this point. So week uh, ending November 2nd, let me, let me just interrupt you if I might, uh, Jesse, uh, because you said that these, uh, the prior data was the week ending November 2nd. Something happened on November 3rd, and then, uh, <laughs> yes, and then some more things happened on the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth. So I wonder, beyond uh, COVID worries, as it comes up over 100-some thousand a day, case-wise, whether the election and the aftermath meant more people were staying home longer, paying attention to the contest. Yeah, we certainly wonder the same. Uh, it's always hard to discern the underlying trend from these daily data that we're getting. So, you know, over the last month here, we have seen some fairly big jumps in both directions where we had a big jump up in spending around uh, the middle of October mm -hmm. during Amazon Prime Days and some other promotions by retailers. Um, then things had kind of dropped back to something that looked a little more normal um, a little bit before Halloween. And then we have had some perhaps some uh, kind of seasonal or idiosyncratic moves around the Halloween holiday and then also Election Day. Right. So it is hard to distinguish what's happening exactly. But I also think if we look exactly at the day to day data, it looks like the very most recent days that we got, like November 8th and November 9th, were, uh, were pretty weak. Right. So that's getting a little bit late, I think, to to try to blame that on the election. Yeah. It's so amazing that you that you get th these kind of data and, and who better than you all uh, to know, because you're tracking it every single day. You know exactly how much has been spent, where, and, and, and fundamentally by whom. Uh, so as we, as we look at your data and compare it with other things that are out there, whether it's open table or uh, whatever, do your data, do those data uh, uh, confirm what you're finding? I would say many of them do. You know, the data never all speak with one voice. Uh, we have seen some softening over the last couple of weeks in some of those numbers like open table restaurant diners, uh, but then also some of the transit indicators like the number of people riding the subway in New York, the number of people going through airports, uh, the Google and Apple transit mobility numbers. You know, those have all softened a little bit in the last couple of weeks, which I think is telling about the same message as our card spending data. Uh, on the other hand, some of the more traditional data like initial claims for unemployment insurance have still been falling every week. So. Uh, we're kind of back in this position where the the alternative data are telling a little bit of a different story than the traditional data right now. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.